Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Spectrum Analyzer's Noise Figure. In this presentation, we'll explain the basic concepts behind Noise Figure and how Noise Figure is measured using modern spectrum analyzers. To understand Noise Figure, we first need to start with Signal-to-Noise Ratio. Signal-to-Noise Ratio, or SNR, is simply the ratio of the power of a signal relative to the power in the adjacent noise. Since power in radio frequency systems is normally reported in logarithmic units, SNR is also normally reported in logarithmic units, that is, in decibels or dB. A high signal-to-noise ratio is almost always desirable. The higher a signal is, above the noise, the easier it is to both detect or see the signal, and the easier it is to demodulate or extract information from the signal. Noise can come from two types of sources. It may be external to the system, that is, noise from the environment, but noise also can be introduced by the system itself or by its components. High SNR is generally desirable, and we might think that we can improve signal-to-noise ratio by passing our input signal through an amplifier. Although the output signal level would be increased by the gain of the amplifier, G, even an ideal amplifier would still amplify both the signal and the noise by the same amount. This means that the signal-to-noise ratio of the input and the signal-to-noise ratio of the output would be the same. Note that in this example, all of the noise is external noise. An ideal amplifier wouldn't add any internal noise of its own to the signal. However, all real-world amplifiers have some amount of internal noise that gets added to the input signal. We'll call this internal noise NA. This added internal noise increases the amount of noise present in the amplified output signal. As a result of this added noise, the output signal-to-noise ratio is always lower, that is worse, than the input signal-to-noise ratio. Although we're using an amplifier as an example here, all active and even passive devices or components add noise to a signal and reduce output SNR. So clearly it would be helpful if we had some way to quantify just how much noise a device or component adds to signals passing through it. We can quantify SNR degradation by calculating the linear ratio of input SNR to output SNR. This is called noise factor and is abbreviated F. Since logarithmic units are much more widely used in RF than linear units, noise factor is then usually converted into logarithmic form, that is, into units of decibels or dB. And this logarithmic form is called noise figure. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll go into more detail about what noise figure is, why noise figure is important, and how noise figure is measured using a spectrum analyzer. As we've just discussed, noise figure quantifies the amount of noise that a component or device adds to a signal passing through it. Noise figure is a very important figure of merit in RF applications. Lower noise figure values are more desirable since low noise figure components or systems make it easier to receive and or detect low level signals. In most cases, typical noise figure values are in the range of single digit decibel values although noise figures of less than 1 dB, or in the low teens of dB, are also not uncommon. Noise figure does, however, vary as a function of both frequency and temperature. One reason why noise figure is so important is that improving noise figure is often easier or more cost-effective than trying to increase SNR in other ways, for example, by using higher transmit powers or larger antennas. Two different types of instruments are commonly used to measure noise figure, namely spectrum analyzers and vector network analyzers. These instruments usually measure noise figure in different ways, and in this presentation, we'll only be covering how noise figure is measured using spectrum analyzers. Another important consideration in measuring noise figure is the dot input signal. In our earlier explanation of noise figure, we used a narrowband signal to show how internal dot noise degrades SNR, but this type of narrowband signal is not used when measuring noise figure. Instead, a special device called a noise source is used. This source produces a known level of wideband noise, which is used as the dot input signal. The amount of noise produced by this special source is specified in terms of its excess noise ratio, 
or ENR. We'll discuss ENR in more detail later in this presentation. The combination of a spectrum analyzer and a noise source can be used to measure noise figure using something called the Y-factor method. Y-factor is the most widely used noise measurement method. A noise source is connected to the device under test input, and the output of the DUT is connected to the spectrum analyzer's RF input. In almost all cases, the spectrum analyzer also controls and provides power to the noise source. The Y-factor method measures the noise power at the DUT output when the noise source is off, and then again when the noise source is on. The difference between these two measurements is called the Y-factor. We'll go through this in more detail shortly. Measurements are usually made and reported over a range of frequencies. Remember that the noise figure of a device tends to be a function of frequency. And normally, the gain of the device under test is measured and reported as well. In practice, the Y-factor method usually involves two measurements. Before making measurements of the DUT, an initial calibration step is usually performed. This calibration step, which is made with the noise source attached to the spec and input, is used to measure the noise figure of the analyzer itself. This allows the analyzer's noise figure to be mathematically removed from the DUT measurement result. This in turn enables a more accurate measurement of the noise figure of the DUT. You may hear calibration referred to as second stage correction because the analyzer represents the second stage in a series of devices, each with its own noise figure. Let's come back to the Y-factor method and explain how it's calculated. In this diagram, the Y-axis is the DUT output noise power in linear units of watts. The X-axis is the noise source power, expressed in linear terms as the noise temperature in degrees Kelvin. Here we'll assume that the off noise temperature is 290 degrees Kelvin, which is the standard temperature for noise figure measurements. A simple equation can be used to obtain the on temperature from the noise source's ENR. If we measure dot output noise power when the source is off, and again when the source is on, we get two points, which can be connected by a line. The linear ratio of N on to N off is the Y factor, and together with the ENR value of our source in dB, we can then calculate noise figure in dB using a simple equation. Note that the point at which the line intercepts the y-axis is Na, the amount of noise added by the dot, and that the gain of the dot can be calculated from the slope of this line. As we'll see, the gain of the dot must be known for both the calibration step, as well as when measuring the noise figure of cascaded devices. Next, let's spend a few minutes covering some additional important noise figure measurement topics. Since noise sources play a critical role in noise figure testing, We'll talk about sources and ENR in a bit more detail. We'll then discuss the role of preamplifiers in noise figure testing, as well as noise figure measurement uncertainty. And finally, we'll briefly touch on the topic of cascaded noise figure measurements. With regard to noise sources, the primary characteristics are the supported frequency range and ENR, that is the level of noise the source can produce. Typically, Noise source ENR values fall in the ranges of approximately 6 dB, 15 dB, or 25 dB. The reason we say approximately is that, as we saw earlier, a source's ENR normally varies by a few dB over its frequency range. 15 dB is the most common of these values. Higher ENR values are needed when measuring devices that have higher noise figures, and the source's ENR should also be at least 3 dB higher than the noise figure of the spectrum analyzer. The ENR versus frequency values of a noise source are referred to as calibration data, which traditionally was provided in either paper or electronic format. This information would have to be manually entered or loaded into the analyzer before making measurements. Modern smart noise sources often store this calibration data internally, that is, within the source itself and the analyzer can then read the ENR versus frequency values directly from the source. Smart noise sources can also measure temperature changes, and this allows the analyzer to compensate for measurements that are not made at the standard noise figure temperature of 290 degrees Kelvin. 
The next topic is the use of preamplifiers in noise figure measurements. Accurate noise figure measurements almost always require the use of an external or internal preamplifier, and this is particularly true when the device under test has a low noise figure and low gain. The reason for this is that the noise figure of the spectrum analyzer itself is often the largest contributor to measurement uncertainty. When the spectrum analyzer has a high displayed average noise level, or DANL, this can make it difficult to accurately measure small amounts of noise added by the device under test. Most modern spectrum analyzers have an optional internal preamplifier, and when this preamplifier is enabled, the displayed average noise level and thus noise figure measurement uncertainty are reduced. This preamplifier is treated as part of the measurement system, and the preamp's own noise figure can easily be calibrated out of the measurement results. We've measured measurement uncertainty a few times already, so let's take a moment to look at this in more detail. Our ability to accurately measure noise figure is limited by many different factors. For example, the uncertainty of the E and R values of our noise source, impedance mismatches between the source, dot, and analyzer, the spectrum analyzer's noise figure and linearity, the DUT's noise figure and gain, the ambient temperature, etc. Some of these sources of uncertainty are also mutually dependent. The manual calculation of uncertainty can be somewhat complicated, and therefore, most spectrum analyzers also include an uncertainty calculator application in which the user enters various values and the application automatically calculates and returns the measurement uncertainty. These applications often also include guidelines regarding the recommended minimum values for things such as source ENR or spectrum analyzer noise figure. The last special topic we'll touch on is something called cascaded noise figure. The combined noise figure of cascaded components can be calculated from the individual gain and noise figure of each component or stage. However, it's important to note that the combined noise figure is not a simple addition of each component's noise figure. For example, the input noise at the first stage is multiplied by the gain, G1, and then the second stage's internal noise is added to this. Both of these are then multiplied by the gain of the second stage, G2, and the second stage's internal noise is added as well. Cascaded noise figures calculated using the Fries equation. This equation uses linear terms and can be expanded to any arbitrary number of stages. As we can see in this example, even if the same amount of noise is added by each stage, the noise added by subsequent stages is a smaller percentage of the total noise. As a result, the noise figure of a cascade tends to be dominated by the first stage, meaning that the component with the lowest noise figure should always be placed at or near the front of the chain. This includes the preamplifier we discussed earlier. Placing this low noise, high gain preamplifier before other components in a spectrum analyzer helps to improve the analyzer's overall noise figure. Let's end with a brief summary. Noise figure is used to quantify the amount of noise a device or system adds to a signal, and thus represents the degradation in output signal to noise ratio. Different instruments and methodologies can be used to measure noise figure, but the most common of these is the Y factor method, which uses a spectrum analyzer and a specialized noise source. In the Y factor method, measurements of dot output noise power are made with the noise source off and then again with the noise source on. The linear ratio of these two measurements are the so-called Y factor, from which noise figure is then calculated. Since the measuring spectrum analyzer will also introduce noise, a calibration step is used to remove the influence of the spectrum analyzer on the measurement. Preamplifiers are very commonly used in noise figure measurements to reduce measurement uncertainty caused by the internal noise of the analyzer. And finally, we took a brief look at cascaded noise figure and how the Fries equation can be used to calculate the combined noise figure of cascaded devices. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Spectrum Analyzers, Noise Figure. Thanks for watching.